This conference will now be recorded. Can you high ability architecture, you know? So how high ability architecture actually works? So what is mean by high ability architecture? Actually, what happens in real time? You will not have one node in real time. You have multiple nodes more than one nodes are also possible, right? Not possible. It's there. So what happens right now? Let's say as a user when we hit a URL, let's say example.com colon 14,000. Actually, it hits our OIM server. And OIM has a support of admin server. Similarly, SUA has a support of SUA server. Uh, means admin server, right? Let me enlarge it. So what happens when the user hits a URL in real time prod? What happens? There is no one node. There is multiple node to make the system as much as available for the user. That's called high availability, right? So there is more than one node and each node is being separated okay with the help of one oracle http server so what happens there is something called load balancer what is the job of the load balancer whenever you hit any example.com 14000 url what load balancer does based on the load okay the server which have the less load or less traffic it will redirect the traffic there so let's say ohs2 having more traffic the direction will be redirect to ohs1 so when the thing again from here the things are same again there are firewalls and all so the networking team will work with that and allow the firewall so the request will properly come to your ym server so ym server again will serve the request and after that in many projects let's say if you are using oud ovd or oid based on that Again, this request, let's say you are provisioning the user, this request are again passed to those servers. Okay. So the concept which I wanted to tell you in real time, you may have more than one nodes. Okay. And these nodes are only separated with the help of okay, load balancers are there and Oracle HTTP servers are there. And again, the flow is same. So nothing else you already know. So this is just a small point I wanted to highlight. So in so let me open my OIM example.com colon 14,000 slash identity. So in this machine, uh, we don't have any user, right? So yesterday, what we had discussed, we had simply, we had simply taken one database. There was one database. <clears throat> in the database, there was one table. And from the table, we simply fetch the user detail to our OIM. That's called reconciliation, trusted reconciliation. And all the artifacts were installed in our machine with the help of a DBET connector, database application table connector, right? Which was the already 80% code is there. We just pass the runtime details. So that's why this connector will be called as GTC connector, generic technology, right? So this one thing we had seen till now. Let me log into my identity console and at the same time, let me open example.com column 14,000 slash sysadmin. <clears throat> right, so here I think we don't have any user. I think only one user I created that day that uh, uh, Atish was one user we created that day. Now, one thing I also wanted to tell you here, you can see your server. Your server is here. You can also monitor your server performance because whenever you start the server, server, you can see it's it's very slow sometimes, right? So it's because of maybe you heard about JVM, right? Garbage collector, all those things. So actually, whenever the lots of object, unused object will increase in your machine, it becomes slow. So you can remove those uh, unused object. Okay, generally what happens, there is funda of garbage collector in Java. What garbage collector does, whenever your object have no reference, only a object is there. What is when garbage collector comes in core Java? Let's say, let's say there is an object, right? You simply return like this. Let's say new employee. <clears throat> what will happen immediately? Our object will be created. 
but when a object will created and if you are not assigning any reference let's say what how you assign let's say employee class e equals to you right right so immediately what happens one reference variable of e is created and let's say this object have some memory address let's say some hexadecimal address 34 ef something like this so this address is stored over here 34 ef and it's have the reference of this so this object is is told occupied object so whenever the garbage collector come whenever the garbage collector come it always look for the object which have no reference so what happens whenever the garbage collector come it checks for the object which have no reference right means these are called orphan object means there is no reference for those object so this is called garbage collector if garbage collector found their object is having no reference let's say like this and the object is useless immediately garbage collector called gc method right this is basic things we learn in core java right so it will call this gc method garbage collector method and this object he will collect and he will go same way and oim is a java based application so <clears throat> you create many things you click here and there so objects are being created in the back end so again with time those objects become useless okay and those object must be garbage collector must come and collect it so by default it's not happen it's not your java program uh, you are manually running it's a j2e enterprise application right so they had written a logic for my knowledge what i know whenever a certain extent of the memory see all the object reside in which memory area you know which memory area all objects we found in java uh, heap, 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 correct, heap memory. So in web logic, even you you do notice one thing. Whenever you start your OIM, not now, after four days, five days, or two weeks, you will see you will get a small message like this. Let's say forty two percent available, right? Like this, it will give you some message. You have to go through the logs. You will see like this. After ten days, maybe again after ten days, you will see. 28 percent available so this memory is heap memory keep on decreasing because number of object are increasing and they had written one logic i was going through the oracle blocks just i come to know means the oracle community means after a particular number if this number reaches then only garbage collector comes and collect it okay it free up the spaces so if you think you already reached at a level see by default 50 percent available is a good number but if you are having 10%, 12%, then definitely it will slow your machine up. So you can also close this. You can also collect this. You will force the garbage collector to come and collect all such kind of object. So you can do it with the help of WebLogic console is possible to do it. So let's say how you will achieve this. So there is something called monitoring, right? When you click on the home in WebLogic console, even in 12C and all, in 12C, the feature is better compared to 11g the graphics and all so monitor dashboard when you go here even you can hit that link it will tell you the information it will tell you the current information so right now you can see this three information let's say jvm right jvm heap thread pool and jvm run jms runtime so these things are not running up so what you have to do you have to simply click play button so you will get their information also live information so it refreshes in each 30 second and each 30 second you will see some graphs right now you are not able to see in just 30 second you will see some graphs will playing from here it will go in front of you some blue yellow color of graphs so what this graph will tell it graph will tell how much space is free <clears throat> how much space is free for you see so it started the graph from here you can see that yellow line started coming from the corner so, and blue line blue line tells how much memory is free okay so let it come so slowly slowly in per second it will come see it's coming so right now how much if you just click on heap okay i just want to see heap so see in the heap this much space is available right if the graph runs in the middle means 50 percent of the heap is vacant right you can see i think 20 or 30 percent is available in heap also you can check the same thing from uh, console itself what you have to do for which server you want to check right now 
you can see this is for ym server i am also telling this thing because it's you you should know see in admin server it's running at the bottom means the number this space define this space defines how much memory is free for this this much memory is free for him this much memory is free for him this much memory is free okay so you can also check it from here let's say i want to check for ym server okay so what i will do i will click on ym server okay in weblogic console you, you i will show you how to check so just click on the oim server and in the oim server just click on the monitoring okay performance so here you can see 48% is free 48% oim is free this is this ga ga gap is 48% so only with the 48% space in the heap oim can run means only out of 100 uh, seats, 48 seats are available for YM to create new object, right? So you can also clear this garbage collect. Just click on the garbage collect. What will happen? GC method will be called internally, right? To collect the garbage. So everything is in Java, right? If your basics are clear, you will very easily understand the things, what is going on here. Otherwise, anyway, you will understand, okay, I will click the garbage collector and it will free up the space. But why it's free up the space? The answer is in core Java, right? <clears throat> it will call the GC method and the object without reference will be cleaned up. So let's see how much it's going to free. Right now it's 48%. Let me see how much it will free. This is who I am, right? So this is the one point which I wanted to share today. Okay, this is the one uh, important point. Now coming towards the reconciliation, right? So let me quickly do reconciliation over here also. I need the connector file. So let me download the connector file. So you can see 60% of the space is free. If you go here, you will see your graph will be also increasing. If you just go here in the JVM, in a moment you will see your graph will all, all again, it will start increasing. Okay, so this heap memory is like, uh, like it will again fill up with the object, right? So that's one thing. Let me just use the connector file. Check to domain itself. Okay. So I will go to, that's correct, weblogic home. Anyway, these things, uh, if you are not remember, that's fine. You will remember slowly. When issue will come, it will remind you forever. <laughs> so just go there and uh, just go to servers, servers, weblogic server. In the weblogic server, all the libraries are there, which helps weblogic to run. Okay, so CD live and here, you will see there is one file which is responsible. What is the file name? Jar builder. WL jar builder, right? So we will simply write Java minus jar, WL jar builder dot jar. So it will extract the things. And it will create reconciliation. Few one events minute. are being generated, right? Yes. When I, and how this is generating, just keep in mind, because when I'm hitting a scheduler, right when i'm hitting the scheduler see there is a logic i will tell you anyway we will cover this in my provisioning topics so the logic is very simple at this moment this much basic concept is sufficient there is a scheduler okay okay, okay. each scheduler hits a task scheduler has a task that's mm -hmm. why we call schedule task right mm -hmm. now each task again if i go in depth has some adapters associated to hit it. I'm not going there in depth. So each scheduler is having a task. Means whenever you hit a scheduler, because we design a scheduler, when I start custom scheduler topic, when we will design our own scheduler, we will write the codes and all. That time I will show you in depth. So whenever we design the scheduler, a scheduler is designed, it's just like, see, in scheduler there are two components. One is the task component where the exact logic is there. The task component is called jar. It is some jar file. The 
first component is task component and second component is ui component is called ui component now it's up to you i will show you that time what are the components you on ui you will want on your scheduler based on different scheduler we have different ui component some scheduler ask some other parameter some scheduler ask some different parameters so there are two components in scheduler so you never see this jar file right you are only seeing this ui component when you hit search a scheduler name let's say my hrms db underscore gtc you will get its ui component only in the ui component it's asked some detail and when you hit run it immediately trigger the task okay it actually run this task now for each task which is being run again there are varieties of tasks available in ym by default 35 or 40. each task have some different roles okay each task have some different roles to perform insert the very common is one thing update delete and all this there are many things i'm just let's say updating about these three things now so this task could either be related to insert this task could be either having logic of insert update delete all together you can write a java code right which can ins not only insert it can update also it can delete also so it has some logic because when this logic is being executed a event is generated because when the task because task in the back end is associated with something called adapter or event handler okay so when you trigger a scheduler a task is trigger a task is trigger means the corresponding adapter or event handler is triggered that's why a event is generated so this scheduler if it is for reconciliation a reconciliation event will be generated if it is for provisioning a provisioning event will be generated apart from reconciliation and provisioning there are various tasks automatic it's going on in the past means in the in the back end there are varieties of tasks also available anyway we will discuss this task today means there are there is one table the table will give you what are the tasks present in uim so let's say there are some jobs which are automatically running let's say evolute user policy is one if is an event which is running is a job there is a escalation job task time retry job right catalog sync job are there right automatic uh, retry failed for async task okay refresh organization membership role membership like these kind of varieties of tasks are there so they are keep on running because this task just for this moment just try to understand there are two category of task in uim one is conditional task conditional task and second is unconditional task anyway i will discuss this thing so don't worry unconditional that conditional task you know unconditional task example can i give you the example is system validation this task you don't need to run it will run automatically all the time it's keep on running to check anything which is coming here and there it will keep on validating there is some task which you need to run by yourself when you click that let's say scheduler is going to create a user let's say create user task so you have to run it but system validation you don't need to run i will show you now now itself i will show you so if you are running provisioning or reconciliation all the time okay a task will be there then task is there means event handler is there means event is there okay and apart from that provisioning and reconciliation some additional tasks automatically run these are called unconditional tasks you have no control on that so for those tasks also depends sometime event is also generated for them because for everything even you click something in OIM it generate an event that is called event. I will discuss these things when I will discuss orchestration. In orchestration, okay. there is a concept of event. Event handler and orchestration we actually learn parallelly. So that time. So for at this moment, you can understand for any action which is directly performed by you or indirectly being performed, an uh, event will be there for sure. Now, in event management, do you able to see that or not? Is it's not clear because in event management generally we see the task which is manually run by yourself for example most of the time okay